Welcome to Are We There Yet? I'm Chuck Minear, and in our last episode, I showed you how I assembled my Starlink Mini Emergency Kit. This kit lets me use Starlink for everyday use, but also gives me the ability to use it totally off-grid and quickly if I need to have emergency communications. In this episode, I will show you how to enable your Starlink account, which plan to choose, and run through an emergency scenario. Stay tuned. Here we go! All we need is an open road And a chance to see a never-ending world that's beautiful Here we go With the sunlight on our skin It's a brand new day It's ours to take and we will let it in This is where the adventure begins Okay, here's our kit. And if you want more information on what is in the kit and where I got the parts and pieces, I'll link episode 46 in the show notes so you can go back and watch. When you first get your Starlink, I highly recommend you do the initial setup in a place where you have good cellular service. This makes sure you have quick access if needed during an emergency or just easy access when you're off the grid. Go to your app store and download the Starlink app. A link's also included with your dish. Find an area free of obstructions. Click on Start Setup. The app will show you in which direction to point your Starlink. In my case, it's north and a little west. Plug the Starlink into power. The app will ask you to open settings and choose Starlink as your Wi-Fi connection point. After Starlink pairs with your device, it will start calculating its orientation. If it's close enough to a good signal, it may automatically perform a software update. Just let that run, and at the end, it will restart the Starlink automatically. Now you see on my screen, it says VPN enabled. A VPN or virtual private network is used to connect securely to a business or a bank. Most people don't have a VPN, and Starlink recommends disabling the VPN if you have one. In my case, I cannot for business purposes, and I was able to continue to connect despite the VPN, but if you can disable it, do so for setup. Now click on Activate. If you purchased your Starlink unit directly from Starlink, you will have already created an account and you just log into that account. If you purchase your Starlink from a third party, I purchased mine from Home Depot, then you will need to create an account. Find the Starlink identifier on the box your Starlink came in and enter it in the space provided. I also took a photo of the identifier and saved it so I would have the ability to access the number in the future just in case. Now enter your billing address. Now allow location access. And then choose your service. I chose the $50 a month roam plan to start with, but you can change this later if you need to. If you ordered from Starlink directly, you already chose and paid for the first month of a plan. Now you choose an account password. This is not to log into your Starlink dish, but to your online Starlink company account. Now I'm using Starlink for emergency backup only at this point, and I want the lowest price possible. So if that's your goal, I wanna show you how to make that happen right during setup. Tap on your subscription. Enter your password if prompted. Click on Manage. This is where you can go to pause your plan, cancel your plan, but in this case, click Change Plan. Scroll down until you see the Rome 10 gigabyte plan. This is a plan that only becomes available as an option after you've paid for your first month. Tap on Rome 10 gigabyte and then tap Continue. Click Confirm, and when your plan is ready to renew in a month, it will only be $10. This will allow you to keep an active account and device, but only use it for backup or emergencies. If you'll be using the Starlink more often, but in various locations, then you'll want to stick with the 50 gigabyte plan or even the unlimited plan. I go over each of these plans and the cost per gigabyte benefits in the previous episode, so be sure to watch it when you're finished with this episode. The last part of setup will be to set up a network name and password for your actual Starlink dish so you don't have strangers connecting to your dish and using up your bandwidth. Click on Wi-Fi Configure, give your dish network a name and a password, and your Starlink is set up. 
So let's say you're boondocking out in the middle of nowhere or you're in an area where there's just no good cell signal for the service you have and there's an emergency. Let's go through an emergency scenario and get connected from scratch. I put all the parts back into the carrying case for this demonstration. If I'm in a situation where I'm away from cell service and need to connect like texting or calling or accessing weather and news, here's what I do. First, I make sure my mobile phone is enabled to take calls over Wi-Fi. On an iPhone, you go to settings, cellular, click on your phone number, and make sure Wi-Fi calling is on. You may have to add an emergency address to your phone to allow this to happen. Android users have a similar setting. Find an area that has minimal obstructions, especially toward the north. I'm going to use my battery bank for this demo. Plug your Starlink kit into your kit's USB-C cord and place the dish pointing north or do what I'm doing and attach it to your tripod for easy access and to minimize possible accidental damage. Plug in your Starlink and turn on the power bank. Connect to your Starlink network in your phone's Wi-Fi setting. I suggest putting your phone on airplane mode and then turning on your Wi-Fi and connecting it to the Starlink network. This keeps your phone from continually trying to access a cell service you don't have in range and significantly prolongs the battery life of your phone. Correct the dish's alignment and tilt according to the app's prompts. If you need a visual guide to help you find the clearest spot in the sky, choose obstructions and scan the sky with your phone, then adjust the Starlink accordingly. At this point, you should be able to make a phone call, send and receive texts, and stream video. Using the battery bank suggested, you should be good for up to three hours of use, more if you power it down periodically. And remember, you can also plug into your uh, truck, car, or your RV if you have an appropriate 12 volt plug installed. I hope this information helps. Thanks for watching. If you have other insights and ideas, please feel free to leave a comment. We all learn from each other and your comments mean a lot. I hope you'll share this video with others and it would be greatly appreciated if you would like this video with a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. It helps us share the joy of travel and the RV life with more people. For Karen, Wesley and myself, we wish you happy travels. See you next time.